What's up guys, back with another educational video. And this week we are talking about training at long muscle lengths versus short muscle lengths, what that means and which is better. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. All right, so there was a new systematic review published with some really heavy hitters from the fitness industry and hypertrophy research. Brad Schoenfeld, who is, uh, I would say, in my opinion, the number one researcher on muscular hypertrophy in the world. He's published tons of great content. He's actually active on social media. I highly recommend giving him a follow. And then Milo Wolf, Dr. Pack, former editor of Reps, shout out to Pack. Michael Roberts, who's another heavy hitter in academia. Menno Henselmans, Brett Contreras, two people who have really put a lot into the research literature. I give a lot of shout outs to Menno and Brett. They actually paid tens of thousands of dollars a piece because they saw a study published on hip thrusts versus squats that they didn't really believe the results. And so they actually paid to have the study replicated and it was actually counter to what Brett thought it was gonna be, the outcome. He thought hip thrusts would be better than squats for glute growth. They ended up being equivalent. And so, you know, big shout out to those guys. He put his money where his mouth is. Without people funding this stuff, it would never get done. Big shout out to those guys. I love that there's so much more hypertrophy research than there used to be. When I was in graduate school, I think I saw a single meta-analysis of hypertrophy research. There just wasn't that much out there in the early 2000s. Over the last 10 years, we've just had this robust increase in the hypertrophy research. And one of the things that has been coming up recently in the literature that there was a complete dearth of even like five, 10 years ago is the research on muscle lengths and training at long muscle lengths versus short muscle lengths. Now let's define what that means. So training at a long muscle length means that your reps are going to stretch the muscle. You know, this would be like a shortened range of motion. Here, if I'm going right here, this is a loosened position. Previous research has focused on full range of motion versus partial range of motion. But full range versus partial range doesn't necessarily tell you long versus short muscle length because for example, if you're doing something say like a pull up and you're doing half reps, you're actually doing half reps typically at the bottom where the muscle is stretched. That could be different than half reps at the top. Same token, if you're doing half reps at the bottom of a squat versus half reps at the top of the squat, does it affect it the same? And there's actually research now that shows one, in general, full range of motion is better than partial range of motion. But that is only the case when you're comparing a full range of motion versus a partial range of motion when the muscle is in a shortened position. So for example, if we're doing squats, we're talking about your typical Olympic weightlifter squat, you know, going down as far as they can versus your typical gym bro squat going halfway down. The research I want to say is, in my opinion, very conclusive that the full range of motion is going to elucidate more hypertrophy than a partial range of motion when you're comparing those two. However, when they compare a full range of motion squat versus a partial range of motion where the person is just doing the bottom half of that movement and the muscle is in a lengthened position, they don't really see much difference in hypertrophy in those studies. So, and this goes for like, um, like biceps, for example, like we were just saying, if you're doing partial range of motion here versus doing full range of motion, seems to be similar results. But if you're doing partial range of motion here versus here, full range of motion seems to be better. Part of what appears to cause the hypertrophy response is that mechanical tension on the muscle in a stretched position, in a lengthened position. This study specifically looked at joint angles and doing exercises in lengthened versus shortened positions. And they wanted to see, okay, when they trained it in lengthened or full range of motion versus shortened range of motion or where the muscle is shortened, they wanted to see if there was gonna be differences in hypertrophy. They didn't find many studies to directly compare this, unfortunately. I think there was about 120 total subjects. So this is relatively preliminary data. But if you look at the overall outcome from the systematic review, it does appear that training in a lengthened position is superior to a shortened position for muscular hypertrophy. If you look at the studies, the overall effect is training at longer muscle lengths produced more hypertrophy. Now there were some studies that showed no difference, but I don't believe any of them showed a significant benefit to training at a shortened muscle length. So it's either neutral or positive in favor of long muscle lengths. 
I don't think I've ever seen a topic where all the studies showed exactly the same thing in the same directionality. But when we look at the overall consensus of the data, usually a relatively good metric is, if we do a forest plot of this, how many are on this side of the line and how many are on this side of the line, meaning benefit or no benefit. In this case, pretty much everything's either on the line or to the benefit side for long muscle lengths. You're certainly not doing yourself any harm by training at long muscle lengths. And if you're training at short muscle lengths, you may actually be missing out on some gains. So this is probably gonna be very upsetting to people like Joel Seedman, who like to say that you just can take a joint to 90 degrees and that's the optimal joint for building muscle. Um, it's not. The, the research has very conclusively shown at least that is not true. Unfortunately, I don't know why Joel is still here five years later saying the same things because he's built an entire identity and business around trying to convince people that they can do short ranges of motion in a shortened position and somehow that's gonna keep them more injury free and build more muscle and strength and that is just simply not the case. There's no evidence to support that and in fact, most of the evidence suggests otherwise and I would even say for injury prevention, um, doing a shortened range of motion with shortened muscle lengths might be beneficial for managing pain for a period of time, but just because something helps you manage pain doesn't mean it's the same thing as injury prevention. And in fact, training a muscle through a full range of motion, getting your body used to having the muscle under load in those positions is probably going to be more beneficial for helping you avoid injury when you're actually using that muscle in that lengthened position in say an athletic event or if you're lifting in that range. Now, if you're someone who is struggling with figuring out what to do with your training, make sure you check out the BioLane Workout Builder. We take all the guesswork out of reps, sets, intensity in terms of proximity to failure, but we give you the flexibility to choose exercises that are available to you or maybe you prefer. We even have at-home programs and we group the exercises in such a way that if you switch to a different exercise in that group, you're still getting the benefits as long as you take it to the appropriate intensity. So make sure you click the link in the description to check out the workout builder. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you next week.